Oh, oh my uh, God! You said it. You I actually said, said we're. Uh, you said two and one. You said two and one. I'm not supposed to, but I figured for clarity's sake. Hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna it's start. It's a new it. month. New month, new wrinkles, man. <laughs> uh, well, welcome, welcome back, everyone. Welcome back, welcome, dude. How you doing? Yeah, man. Uh, I'm doing well. How about yourself? Great, man. I'm good. Yeah. I think you know. You know um, we're back in business. I'm I'm going to be painting on this guy, um, but I think we got to get we should get down to you know a couple orders of business here, which is number one. Um, we're going to have a little break in June. And well, well, we're doing an episode next week, right? Do you feel you feel like uh, doing? The, yeah, that's I, June. That's June. That's June eighth, though. Is that eighth or seventh? Eighth? Yeah, yeah. I think uh, I'm taking off on June 9th. so I could. Oh, okay. I think we can do an episode if if you're down for it next week. Yeah, I'm um, totally done. Okay, okay. Let's let's put that on the. Let's let everyone know that's what we're doing. Everyone, that's what we're doing. Um, mm -hmm. but yeah, but then uh, we'll be out for a bit. Um, it's a, it's all my fault, really. Um, I'm going to be out of town. Um, Dude, it is always all your fault. So I take the everyone blame. I take the blame on this one. Just this one, though. <laughs> and um. We'll be back in probably what first second week in July, probably after the fourth. I think that'll be that'll, that's what we're gonna pull. Yeah, I think we figured that it was after the fourth because you know it's a holiday in the United States. It's a big one, you know. It's our biggest holiday, probably. Um, but yeah, and I think that's well. That's kind of all for for order of business, you know, call to orders here. Unless what, <laughs> what else are we, there was something else. You just mentioned it right before we went on the stream. Uh, well, we are going to be, I don't know. Uh, I think that's it. We that's are, weird. well, what well, we should talk about, like, you know, we actually have an exciting, uh, announcement. We're actually going to be, Oh, yeah. Uh, on, I think it's like J uh, July, at the end of July, um, they haven't gone out yet, but you heard it here first, um, with the advertisements, you know, we haven't advertised it yet, but uh, we are going to be a part of Vision X, the Vision X conference, which is pretty sweet. Yeah, um, good folks over there. Online conference uh, by, it's through, um, hosted by the same, some, same people behind Sentient Academy. Um, since it's got people like Jeff Pine, Brian Mark Taylor, um, David Dibble. Uh, it's just, I mean, the list goes on. There was so many people, so many incredible artists. So, um, yeah, but the, the, the conference is nuts. I mean, I barely just scratched the surface of what, who's going to be there. A lot of people from the industry, um, from fine art and uh, concept art and illustration it's it's pretty sweet um, yeah it's a killer so we're super killer excited con. we're gonna and we're gonna talk about like the, the the movement of the we're gonna move the show uh to friday for that uh for that one day so uh we will but we'll remind everyone uh it's friday around the same time so it should be a lot of fun mm -hmm. um yeah dude that's that's uh that's probably that's it right it. um yeah i think that's it I news mean, of the day i've been yeah news of the day that wraps up our news of the day um yeah so uh how you been man i'm pretty good um yeah i can't complain you know i'm back into this i'm i mean on this piece i've been i messed a lot of things up so now i'm i'm painting back in and painting over a whole bunch of stuff so and I also, it's, it wasn't like we were talking about last week that I was hoping it'd be dry, and, but it's like half dry. So um, actually, I was I was hoping it would be wet, and it's like half half dry. So it must have been like the atmosphere or something down here in the basement. But now I am unable to oil out 
and so I'm just I'm just painting over stuff, I'm just going for it. Bolo, bolo yellow, yellow bolo. Yeah, bolo yellow. <laughs> you know. Um, did you? Do, do you have some spray retouch varnish? I should have done that, um, but I was anticipating it being like a real slow dry, like it has on previous ah. pieces, because I got all this clove oil right. and everything. But surprisingly, it dried almost most of the way. So I'm just working against that now. But it's all good. I'm just, I want to make a lot of areas darker anyway, so I'm just painting right over them. Well, so you're blaming <laughs> Mark Carter, basically. <laughs> I'm, bl I'm blaming him for this one. What do you, what do you got going on this time, man? Dude, same, so I, same guy? I'm adding same working on the same painting, same painting. Nice. Uh, but I added color, color earlier today. So uh, I am uh, continuing to add color on top of this underpainting and uh, gonna try and finish it up. Uh, we'll see how, how close we get. I mean, I can I'm gonna get pretty close. I anticipate in these next two hours, pretty close to a a finish of some Excellent. sort uh, for sure. Um, there's certain other things like right down here I don't mess with, but I'm going to, I'm going to pretty much put everything in and then maybe finish it up, uh, tomorrow morning. So excellent. Uh, and then, yep. Moving then fast. Off to the gallery. Oh man, that's great. Yeah. Right away. More of a necessity. Yeah. Oh, actually this is going to be, I think about it. This is going to be for another show that's later on in the year. Hmm. So, Still a treat um, for street for the collectors out there. They can check this episode oh, yeah, out man. and see your um, process. Yeah, yeah, actually, one of them, uh, one of the collectors of my pieces, uh, purchased a piece, uh, one of the paintings that I did this season, which is pretty cool. You know, and okay. I think I told you that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they, you said that they yeah, kind of they yeah. saw the YouTube video, and that was like extra. Yeah, they mentioned the YouTube extra video. value for them. So shout out to all the people in in the YouTube. Um, you know, uh, the, uh, uh, we always appreciate you watching these things on demand. Um, are the new episodes up? I'm yeah. Gonna... Yeah. I got last week's up right mm -hmm. away. I finally figured out how to schedule things, oh. you know, cause the rendering takes forever. So I, um, yeah, the figured out how out. to schedule them and now they just kind of go up after they've been, um, trimmed. Look at that. Technology. Boom and done. Yeah, technology, right? Um, <laughs> hey, we got a long timer, long time live brusher, Aaron Rufino here. Hey, Aaron Rufino. Man, yeah. you've um, been hanging with us for a long time. We appreciate that. I know, man. Since the beginning. Um, said, I had to miss the past few weeks, so apologies if you covered this already. Tyler, question, Tyler, for you. How do you go about transitioning those complementary colors in the forehead? How did you make it beautiful and not? Uh, how do you? How did? How did you make it beautiful, and not a giant muddy mess? <laughs> well, the stuff you're talking about the the greens in the forehead that I'm right I'm about to paint over. <laughs> yeah, I'm um, complimentary colors in the forehead. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, well, I mean that was. I think last week I was working real. I was working really gray, so I could push in some greens when I was mixing. So I had like a big pile on my palette of, of basically like a cool gray and I was kind of pushing it to green and then I was pushing it back towards, um, towards red, a little orange. So that's kind of how I was, um, subtly working it back and forth. It's, it's, yeah, it is easy to get into that muddy mess, but if you, if you're keeping it in sort of like a neutral gray, um, you can control it a lot better. At least that's how I have been able to, but unfortunately I'm, I'm planning to kind of paint over this whole area that's the greens. I want to have if where I'm, you can see where I'm pointing up here. I want to have that still kind of be a coolish green, but like here is where I want the, I'm just going to paint right on it. Here's where I want the sort of the like hard core shadow transition. Um, so I'm going to start actually painting that down a bit. Um, so this is, I'm just reworking everything essentially, but I appreciate you um, enjoying the, cool colors I have up there, but I'm about to obliterate them. <laughs> well, did you, um, now how close are the, 
the colors were you able to like tweet the colors like i remember you were saying like oh you know the colors in the video don't look anything like the colors in real life they're, they're um in the video on it's the stream better. they're they're slightly better they're still a bit more saturated than reality but yeah. i'll keep messing with them until i can get there look at your sweet setup man it's all right it's not great I you got I, you know you could always use your phone but i don't know if that i don't know how uh android does it yeah you know they probably don't do it but i haven't tried i know apple stuff is really set up for that to do that really easy that's no, very natural you know <laughs> here we go <laughs> here we go <laughs> You know, it's very, uh, it's designed by creatives for creatives. <laughs> it's for artists. It's for artists. Oh, yeah, yeah, I remember that. <laughs> I remember that day. We had a teacher that's in a school quote. who. That's a quote. That's a quote from Bill Mon, man. It's a quote from Bill Mon, who informed the class yeah. that Max were for artists. Oh. And you know what? He's been right all those years. Except uh, that's why I, I quit being an artist and uh, I bought a PC recently. Yeah. You're not an artist anymore, man. Nice try. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so funny. So, um, I forgot uh, what I was. What was I going to tell you? There's so many things. Oh man! Gosh, you know, for those of you who don't it's been know, a wild week, you know. Yeah, but Tyler and I like we don't talk outside of the stream. Try it's not to. Very rare. It's no, but it's really rare. Is that yeah. that we? It's yeah. It's like yeah, we try not to. Um, it's really rare. We have to kind of schedule times to to talk, which is kind of wild when you think about it. Um, it's just been nutty, man. I have like text messages and phone calls. I got to get back to and. Uh, yeah, man, life gets crazy, you know, gets in the way. Life gets in the way, as, crazy, as Ian Malcolm said. <laughs> life gets in the way. Who's Ian Malcolm? You know, in Jurassic Park, oh. he says, life finds a way. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> I know, it wasn't very good, but it's now. Life finds a way. It's now in stone. Maybe Ian Malcolm didn't even say that. Dude, why you, you can't misquote me and Malcolm now? <laughs> I mean, Pause. we're professionals here. I'm just I'm just over here painting over a, a whole painting, so don't worry about me. Dude, isn't it like... I don't know how not to do that, to be honest with you. I mean, I've, I've painted paintings where I just finish it, go from one end to the other. But it's a exhausting, and b I end up revisiting those areas anyway and painting over shit. So like, yeah, I'm I'm the same it's... digitally. I I get a little like I guess frustrated when it comes to traditional painting because I I really want it to just be like Greg Manchez, you know, and just like I just put down the color I want and it's like right there. But um yeah, but he's literally a ninja. Last he's time an I actual him. ninja. That's the problem. He's an actual. How do you compete with a ninja? So. so yeah, and that's what I think what happened here. I was trying to be like really direct, and now that it's like half dry, I got it, and I'm scumbling in all these areas. I'm learning. I'm learning lessons here, folks, live on the air. You know, most of it. I was I was watching. Um, so every so often, I'll sign up for a Patreon. Yeah. Because you know, I'm just I want to from artists, you know, and. Uh, I, I signed up for uh, Scott Burdick and Susan Lyons. Um, oh, nice. Uh, Patreon uh, ones and Stephen Bauman and Andrew Tissler. I like Andrew's and stuff. Of, His processing yeah, is great. really good. The way he explains stuff is great. So he, so Scott Burdick, though, you know Scott Burdick's work? I think so, yeah. Sounds familiar. I'm sure you would know it if you saw it. But like that dude's painterly, man. Like he's super painterly. And it's incredible how. Like he has these like just where he talks over like kind of sped up videos of his him painting and he's talks over like 
his process is amazing how many times he repaints something like he goes he repaints like a head like seven eight times and like he'll like detail it up so it's almost photorealistic like i mean really tight and then completely repaint it oh wow <laughs> and then simplify it and then repaint it again just because it's just like doesn't have the energy he getting, wants no, yeah right it's just like not the right feeling and that is like you know you look at that at the end and you're like you would never know you really wouldn't like you there would be a lot of paint on the surface but you just would never know how how much he he actually um repaints stuff and i'm like dude good for him i mean that, that's really hard to make that that kind of painterly look it just takes a lot of time because it's just i at least i'm convinced that like that's it that's like that's one of the ways you know where it's like you're basically just repainting over some stuff, stuff until it looks right and that's that gives me anxiety i don't know why you know well and it's he's like, going for a almost like effortless look right i assume and yeah and yeah. what it is is he's actually a lot more work than than people think oh man it's 100 percent it's a ton more work and that's the like and I've attempted things like that. I just feel like you're just in a constant state of changing stuff, and like, it, I'd have to spend a lot more time doing it. I I don't know. It's maybe it's just not like a. It's fun at first. It's just throwing things around with like just confidence, like. But it's like what you were saying before, like you thinking that it's just, boom, you lay, lay a stroke there, and then good to go, and then move on to the next one. Like, a lot of times it's not like that. You know, yeah, no, for sure. Hardest there are, but that's always what I'm after. But it's like almost never. It's almost never the case, dude. Seriously. Um, so, yeah, that's a, it's that's why I'm like on this like big underpainting kick as of late because it's just like, well, I know I'm gonna paint over it, so I might as well get nuts. And at least if I can get crazy and bold with strokes. I know I'll just, you know, I won't have to worry about color. And if I don't like it, I'll just paint over it. Right. And it gives me the mental space to do that, even though I could just as well, just as easily do that in color. If that makes any sense. No, it makes total sense. I mean, yeah. Then, the, I mean, that's what we can, that's what we're doing, right? You can, you can paint over stuff and change things as you go. Right. Um, I, I don't know, man. I get stuck. I think we've talked about this a million times. Like, like hard process. I'm not good at it. Um, I, I kind of change things up as I go. Most every time I started painting different, I think every time. Yeah. Ditto. And that's the, cool. Like the, that's just how I do it. Right. And that's how you do it. Dude, we're the Mike Tyson school of uh, painting. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Constant change up. No, no, no. It's a, you ever hear, you know, Mike, the famous Mike Tyson quote. No, no. What, what did he say? He says everyone has a plan. Everyone's got a plan until they get punched in the mouth. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's right. That's right. <laughs> that's this right. is 100% true. Oh, my um, God. Oh, look. See, I've completely painted over all those greens. Sorry, Aaron. I know you're digging them, but. No, Aaron left already. Aaron's gone. Oh, okay. great. <laughs> Just great. We lost Aaron. Oh, he's there. He's there. Oh, yeah. How do we? Aaron's asking how we push past the frustration of having to repaint stuff. Oh, um, that's well, a good question. I, you know, it's a really great question, and it's stuff that, like, every painting. I almost have every painting where I'm like, there's a point of frustration for me, and it's just, uh, it's brutal. I like hate it and I'm trying to come up with a way of working where I don't have that like frustration is one thing like okay I didn't get it let me get it again and get it you know but like the hopelessness sometimes you know you have you know that feeling of hopelessness like oh shit you know yeah like, oh, like, oh no this is not good yeah it's there's like a perpetual sort of uh fuck know what i'm doing here i don't know what i'm doing that's yeah. that's like i get that a lot in 
in many stages of a painting. I, so I try yeah, and, yeah. well, you know, there I've read a lot of other artists, the way they work. And I think a lot of them, um, what they'll do certain is they, I think the artists try, there's certain artists that try and set themselves up in a way where they can just focus and not freak out on, and, and how the task at hand is always manageable. And so I've always found that, you know, um, we, the way we were trained to paint, for instance, was very like cover the canvas as quick as possible with color, block in two values. Like it's a very traditional, straightforward way of like, or, or like impressionism, like a direct painting, you know, like light side, shadow side, basic values of each. And then you add values on top, this and that, and then accents, boom, done, you know, um, and I've always found when I cover the canvas in color, it gives me like anxiety because it's just like, oh God, I got all this, all these problems now. <laughs> like, no, it's like, I got to fix this. I got to fix that. I got to fix this. I got to fix that. And it's yeah, just like, you like creating more issues almost. Yeah. It's just like unnecessary, you know? And so, but it makes sense. I get why. You know, a lot of artists say, like, I just got to get the whole thing covered. Um, but other artists have come up with, like, uh, tend to actually not cover everything. And I think that's, uh, they finish things off one by one, uh, like little, an area by area. And so they at least have a gauge of where they're going or where they've been. And, you know, if it doesn't, look good then they could still stay in that area until it does look good and then move on now you have to work a certain way you have to be going for a specific look like i get you know so it's, all of this is contingent to that to what the end result that you're going after right so it's not a one size fit all fits all but i understand the rationale uh the, and the logic behind it um and then there are other artists that uh do a layer where they just like I'm doing, which is like a dead color layer, which is just focus on one thing and then like value and then visit the color over again. Now I do this monochromatically, but there are artists that do it with color. They're just really value focused. Um, mm -hmm. So they always have like a stage built in where it's like, this is not the finish. Like, it's just like you're reassuring yourself that this is not the finish and that you have the room to fix things and you know, they'll, it's going to be fine. But I think a lot of artists, what they'll do, the, the ones that finish things off like that, like one by one, or do it in stages like that, their big thing is every stage has a finish to it. Yeah. It's like we were talking about with Drew Struston. Yeah, I can't work that way. But yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. Like, where they almost yeah. finish out sections. And exactly. Yeah, I can't but I can't I can't work that way. And then I can't do the sort of like a complete opposite where like everything's like really polished, but roughed and then details are getting tightened. Right. Um, I can't paint that way either. I'm sort of like in between um, where I kind of see it like I'm molding clay. And maybe that's maybe this is an answer to Aaron's question is I'm like kind of molding clay and if I have to rework an area of the clay, that's fine. Like it doesn't bug me as bad as completely restarting. If that, I don't know if that even makes sense. I don't know what I'm saying. Yeah, 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 it does. Cause it's, it's what it, but you're basically setting it up so that like, for instance, you're setting it up so that you have the room to, to adjust things and you're just making it. I think, I guess the point is like, just make, have a process that where it's in really enjoyable to paint for yourself. Not everyone's process is going to be enjoyable. Like, like roughing it in kind of, you know, I, like but with teaching so long, I, I know so many different processes and how to go about painting things. And I understand why they work. Um, but for my own work, when I'm, you know, it's a completely different story. It's like, it's like you were saying, Tyler, it's like, uh, I started painting differently every single time because I have, the, the image has different needs to it. So, yeah, yeah. I think that's the best way to, for me, the best way to describe what I'm thinking is 
I can't paint each image the same because they're not all the same image. If it was all the same image, then sure I could paint it the same, but yeah. I have like a, I have to have a completely different process cause I'm seeing it as a very different solve than previous images. And like you were saying, like it all depends on, it just, it depends on, you know, we've said this a thousand times. I just said this, you know, two seconds ago, it all depends on the, you know, what you're going after. Like there are certain artists, that do everything in like tons of studies tons of you know uh references and things like that and basically once they got the reference down and is basically saying okay i am just literally finishing it off to match it exactly as exactly as possible or you know like in a classical painting type of sense like the window shading method it's like i'm finishing my I, I my goal is to finish up form as tightly as as finished as possible mm -hmm. so i'm rendering everything up to the same level of information um and you know and then there are other artists that have that are painterly that do the same thing that finish it in sections like greg manches but well, as they're painting they have a finished idea of what that painting is going to look like uh, or they have a really good idea of what the painting is going to look like. So they have a plan, uh, basically. So it's not like, it's not a, um, it's not a passive thing. I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah, it, it does. It makes sense. It's, and it's sometimes, and like we've said so many times on this show, it's, it's a matter of like the training that muscle, right? Like, so if, if, you know, Greg has a plan, like when we're talking about how the way Greg paints, it's very, it seems very direct. He has a plan, but he's done it enough. He's done it so many times that it's pretty clear in his head where things are going to go and how he can mix the color to get to what he needs really quickly. So, the, I mean, that's where the, it's just repetition comes in really. Yeah. And then you, you have somebody like Robin Ely, you know, you know, Robin's work. Yeah. So Robin will set up his reference and he takes he spends most of his visualization time like what the image is going to look like through his reference making at least for some of his work you know uh, at least the current work that he was working on um and so for him it's like okay now i'm going to match it match it and render it up so everything gets it exactly like as close to the references as possible and for him uh, he finishes everything all at once, knowing full well that he's probably going to have to go back and tighten up certain things. He doesn't want to do that, but it ends up inevitably happening. But the way he keeps himself sane is he has a, um, he times or he paces himself uh, by, uh, by basically finishing off every single day he does or aims to do a, eight and a half by 11 or just uh, like a four sizes. Is that a four? Um, um, man, Europeans over there. It's, eight, it's eight, pretty eight. close. A three is, is double that. Okay. Um, just in a, in one dimension. Um, so it's like 16 by 11 or something like that. Okay. So a four then, right? I think that's right. It's, I was just working with those size. dimensions. I should know. Yeah. Like, uh, yeah, yeah. So like, um, a, like a, just a regular piece of paper's worth of painting done, and that's how he does it. Mm -hmm. He just goes, okay, this is my goal for this day, and so the painting is still unfinished, but it's looking pretty good so far. So don't freak out. Like you got to play these mind games with yourself, you know. Yeah, and it's like the ugly phase. I mean, that's why we call it that because there's things are going to look. They're not going to look the way you want for a bit. Right. And some artists try and eliminate that like as much as possible um, at the, you know, at a given time so that they can like Drew Struson. He's another example. Like his exactly. drawings. Yeah. Like the underdrawing is a full drawing. It's like he's basically finishing it off as a drawing. And then he'll go on top of that with some value. And then he goes and that looks like a full piece. Then he goes on top of that with color uh with airbrush and then that looks like a has a finish to it and then it goes on top of that with like colored pencils and opaque acrylic and then you know right so. which is a great way to work because it's like you don't you're avoiding the ugly phase and it's yeah awesome because then you always feel good about it i think the ugly phase can demoralize some people and they kind of abandon the piece or 
get frustrated totally. with the piece at that point. But, you know, at the same time, I know why certain artists find that stage by stage thing just frustrating because it's like, no, I'm ready to finish it now. Not three steps from now, right now. <laughs> describing right? me. And so yeah, it's, you're describing yeah. me. It's like, I just want to get it done and then move on. That's how I um, feel a lot of the time. So I'm just like, I'm ready to be done. I got, hmm. and, and it's weird. It's like, I got the idea out. I, I can see it. It's almost, this is how I feel in my mind is I can see it. Right. And I'm like, now I got to paint it or I got to finish painting it. And I don't want to, because I can see it, you know, it's there. Um, and so I just, I have to fight through that stage quite a bit. The, um, me not wanting to render it out, even, you know, the painting's not done, but in my head, I'm like, eh, it's close enough. <laughs> right. Cause like, it's like i already have the vision in my head too yeah, in combination with that i'm good yeah. yeah and no one else can see it though that's the problem i have to comp i have to finish it so that people can see that thing that was in my head <laughs> that's funny yeah it's it's so dumb right this is dumb yeah it's a struggle it's so, like it's such a like it's so ridiculous though it's that's the reason why like having process and studying process is so important because it's just, it's a, it's like, Oh, I, you know, you could do that. It's like, Oh, not everything is done the same way. You know, this fits my logic a little bit more that fits my logic or this process or these combinations of these process, you know, processes mm -hmm. fit, fit, you know, my thinking. But it's also, it's just all these artists saying like, okay, step one, do the drawing. So it's just so that you can, I think, it was created also so you could be like you know you achieve it's like uh you're setting goals for yourself like that are attainable right and so it's like an, an underdrawing it's not the finished piece you know that it's an underdrawing but it's a pretty successful one so that gives you more more confidence to go into like the next stage you know 100 percent. yeah is this the worst if like you nail a drawing it's the worst it could look that's, that's the way i feel I... about like admire the Struson method right because he's he's always happy with the stage he's in i mean I don't, i'm not reading his mind i don't know if he is but the way it's set up it's set up for him to be always happy so aaron has a uh follow-up he goes so would you say your quote-unquote good enough threshold has increased as you become better painters yeah i'd, I'd say so yeah i mean 100 yeah, percent it, it, it's also like you're getting the muscle memory down to actually make it look the way you want quicker. Um, you know, when I work digitally, I can, I actually do like a tight, pretty tight drawing now. And then I, um, I basically color, I like use colorize and, and overlay layers to, um, rough in all my colors, but the tight, the drawing's tight enough that I can be like, yeah, I'm happy with how this has gone. And, I'm ready to um, start rendering it essentially, but I used to be yeah, used to be completely different. So, well, your eye develops too, you know, and it uh, like what you think is possible, what you think is good, you know, you're you're always like uh, you know what your quality level is always rising because people are always getting better, and also your just your eyes developing, so it's able to see the difference, you know, what makes really great artwork great and you're going to be doing that for the rest of your life so you know it's um it definitely is like a a constant thing mm -hmm. um you know i i'm just you know that for me i know like i don't have a good enough thing like oh it's good enough i it's more like i wish this was better i don't sure. know if that makes sense no, that makes sense um because it's just, you know, it's more, it's what, what drives me is a little different, right? It's like, I don't want to fail because this is all I want to do for the rest of my life. And so I want it to be as the best it can be. Um, so, I mean, that's pretty, that's a pretty healthy, normal way of thinking, I think. And yeah, if you're going to, if you want to be good at something, you got to make it the best it can be, right? Yeah. But, you know, that's where the disappointment comes in at the end. I mean, you and I talked about this, why we both hate our pieces when, I'm, when we're done. Oh, yeah. 
Well, I mean, yeah. It's this fine balance. God, we've talked about this a million times in our careers. And maybe this is this I think is good information for like artists, young artists out there. It's always this fine balance of like hating the stuff that you're doing. But like you hate it just enough to make it the best it can be. But you don't hate it so much that you quit. It's kind of like this fine line that you're this fine balancing act. Um, that's how I've always seen it. You know, we've known, Ray and I have known a number of artists in, you know, through our careers that were almost like defeated by that, right? Like they, they were in the stage of, um, they were defeated by the frustration. So it's hard. Yeah. It's, um, I, I've always seen it a hundred percent as this fine balance of, you got to dislike your stuff enough that you want to make it better. And not so much so that you're defeated by your self-loathing, I guess, by the work that you've done. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. You know, and uh, I mean, the Fat Baron actually dovetails into what I was going to say. Is like uh, the Fat Baron said, in the history of the world, do you think any artist, excluding the clinically insane, has looked at their work and thought, you know, I like that. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I, yeah. It's, uh, I mean, we talk about self-deprecation and all this stuff, but they're, there are times where I look at old pieces and I'm like, and I'm sure Tyler, you do the same thing where you're like, you know, yeah, that wasn't yeah. bad, man. You know, I, I do too. It's usually, it's usually not right after I've painted it. Cause I'm, it is definitely like not snow blind. Um, but yeah, I mean, I've had a, a ton that I'm like, you know, I really like this one enough that I want to like, you know, hang a print of it in my own house or stuff like that. So I, I have, I have had a few actually like that where I like it enough to um to not get rid of it right away. Usually I I'll hide a piece away for a long time right after I finish something because I dislike it so much. So yeah, I don't think it's the clinically insane um only the clinically insane will like their work. I think I think you will like it. It's just there's definitely a, almost for me there's always a period of of extreme dislike yeah, i'm always reminded by like a miles davis quote um who's that uh, <laughs> but I've been, you know for do, do you do you still hate jazz side note no did i do ever hate, hate jazz, jazz? oh my god about? tyler you told me one time you're like dude i hate jazz Are you sure i told you this you told me this in grad school Oh and I God. was like, "What? That, I must How been, do you hate an entire genre?" I had to have been joking because I I like jazz. <laughs> I don't listen to it a lot, but I like jazz. Well, we were very different. I mean, you're allowed to have a difference, a change in it, of opinion. You know. Yeah, I probably changed my opinion in this particular what? situation. Like, Whoa! Yeah. Sorry, yeah. something's ringing on my machine. You guys can probably all hear it. No, no, it sounds good. Okay. Well, something's ringing. So, somewhere. go ahead. Keep talking. I'm going to try and turn this off. Okay. Um. So Miles Davis said that if if you're going to be always creating, like having a life of like where you're creative, you know, creative life, where you're creating things, um, you have to be about change. Mm hmm. And it's super. I uh, just it's, it's so simple but it's super poignant it's like basically what he's saying is like you can't be complacent and I think oh, that's so. where our like self-loathing comes from it's like it could always be better it's it's gotta be better and you know you're you're ch chasing this intangible thing that you'll never get to uh, but we've seen artists I think also we're just terrified of becoming complacent because we've seen artists who have become complacent and they become pastiches of themselves. Like they just get stuck in a a certain stage of their development and then they start to regress. Mm -hmm. They just like, oh no, what happened? You know? Um, and so, it's very, it's I mean, super I, common. It's... I want to be, you know what I, I want to be like? I want to be like, 
um, John Rush in my attitude towards things because I have a really I have a, I want I have the same attitude like John. For those of you who know who John Rush is, he did the Wells Fargo logo and a bunch of other things. But you know, it's the most easiest thing to yeah to recognize to recognize and um so i studied with him for a semester and uh, when we were in grad school and tyler and i were in grad school and so learned a ton from him but i remember he visited him in chicago before before the pandemic actually had had started and had uh he was talking about how he was working on a a, uh, a series where he thought that he finally was figuring stuff out and they had like he uh, like all this work they worked on for a year was useless <laughs> oh wow <laughs> and he was like he's like now nah, i'm not gonna get to that point where he was like now nah, i think i'm gonna just destroy it and it's like well i don't know about that i don't have enough pieces to destroy and i really need to make a living <laughs> it's the only way i'm gonna make it's my yeah. livelihood like there's like a know. there's a a sunken cost not the sunken cost fallacy but a sunken cost at some point <laughs> yeah 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 so it's just you know uh i was like yeah man like it's like and he's 70 and he's still pushing like and i'm like man that's it yeah that's how it should be that's right? what i want you know yeah you know it's not that uh, in life life changes your priorities change and you know, but I, I just think that that I really enjoy that that chase. It's like I love hate it. It's a burden, but you know, I have to. I've got to see this through. I think that's yeah. my, my biggest like you know, a sense of urgency that I have. And I look back on like ways you know we. We used to paint in school or even before I'd learned anything about being an artist. And I, I always remember that I really enjoy the, those moments where I started painting something a different way. Um, those like epiphanies and jumps in quality or, or just breakthroughs. And so I, I never, you know, I see it, I see it kind of like, um, the analogy I see it as is, you know, the way people thought about physics, you know, in the in the eight, late 1800s and like 1890s. They were like, we figured it all out. We figured out everything about physics. It, it's all done. Uh, we'll never learn anything more about physics. And then, you know, Einstein came around and completely revolutionized that. So I, I, I look back and I see those moments of like when I changed the way that I created a painting and I, I can't like fall into the trap of thinking like, well, that's it. I figured out how to do it. I have to think of it like the, the, the way, you know, science has changed and physics has changed. I have to think of it as like, no, I'm going to have, I'll have, there will be another breakthrough and I will change the way I, I operate and that'll be a great thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's so, it's so weird. You got to have like the, not to use a sports analogy, but oh, great. Here it's we like go. one of those. Nice. <laughs> uh, it, it's not a sports analogy. Oh, my God. I like pulled a muscle. <laughs> Better not be. Oh, my God. That busted it good. <laughs> now you're hurt. Oh, great. my God. We got to go oh off the God. air. Ray's hurt. So it, it's like when Damn, I got um, you good. I'm proud of myself for that. Dude, like right in my right oblique. <laughs> That's my first live injury on live brush. He sustained this injury, held it for the rest of his days. So, <laughs> so uh, you know, when, when, when like if, uh, football teams and the coaches they or like players after they win, they talk about how like they have they'll celebrate it for one day and then you know get moving on like yeah. move on to the next thing it's like we ha as artists like you have to kind of do that um <laughs> all i hear in the back of my head is here we go <laughs> oh sports let me stretch let me stretch 
Oh no. You gotta stretch, folks. Yeah, make sure you stretch everyone. So this is what'll happen. You're messing around, you're painting. You hurt oh, yourself. God. Okay, I'm, I'm better. I'm better. Um <laughs> So, yeah. Enjoy it. Enjoy the things. I mean like uh, but that, that I, um, I think Greg said that to me. I won an award for a Spectrum Award years ago. It was like my first one. And that was like one of the, fr I was hanging out with him afterwards. And that was like the, f like one of the first things he said to me was like the second you win, I think this was Greg. Um, he's like, the second you win an award, you have to work harder. Um, and you know, I, I feel yeah. like Bill had said something like that too. Um, but it's true. You know, you got you can't just sit like rest on your laurels, right? Is that that's a that's a phrase? That's a yeah. phrase humans have said. Um, yeah, you got to keep so, going. Hey, Greg told me. Yeah, Greg told me something similar after I won my uh, gold to Society of Illustrators. He, like he had said, like because I told him, I, said, I don't know what to do. Like, what do I do after I win something like this? He's like, just enjoy it now today, and then just move on. Yeah, yeah. Because it. it's over, and that don't you know you gotta, you know the the expectation you have a new expectation you gotta surpass, and you, you gotta keep wearing. This is just one thing, and you know it's a moment in time, but it's not everything, and you've gotta prove yourself over again. And I was like, wow. I think that's and a good talked way about how he had a to think, though. I mean, that's the way to that's the he, way to operate, in my mind. Well, he talked about he had a friend who won a gold, and and then you know thought like, okay, now we're really gonna see his stuff, and then he just disappeared. Yeah, <laughs> and that scared, yeah. scared the hell out of me. What he told me. That. <laughs> uh, scared the hell out of me. Oh God. You hey, know that's good though. You know, getting scared by. Someone like Greg. It's good. It's a good story. Scary. It's a scary man. It's a ninja. Yeah, Mikey asked to reassess your rates and move on. <laughs> yeah, right? It's like, up your prices and, it, you know. It's funny. Yeah, Greg is a ninja. Uh. <laughs> All right, I think it's I've re... Day. I mean, it looks really red on the on the Jesus, you on the stream, the whole thing. I just, but I just I repainted just him. That. It's really you red on the monitor. <laughs> it's red. You know, I'll you know what I'll do is I'll post like a, I'll post an actual like true color shot of this for the um yeah, for the Instagram for the Instagram. But it, I actually I think it looks screen. better on stream. Um, unfortunately. But I'm not going to repaint it again. <laughs> Third time's a charm, man. Yeah, I'll get there. The lights here are a little different from the lights in my studio upstairs, and so. Oh yeah. But uh, yeah, it's. I'm getting along. Uh, Aaron said, I miss the green, but I respect your pursuit for the glory of a better painting. <laughs> Thanks. Oh my God. I will tell you that in, in this, on the one I'm looking at, there's a bit more green up on the top of his crown there. So, um, it's still there. It hasn't been completely gotten rid of. Aaron left again. <laughs> Can never satisfy Aaron this went guy. to go. Aaron, Aaron, Aaron checked back in just to see how the green was going. Saw that it it wasn't. As a matter of fact, it had been eradicated. Uh, I'm just. We missed you, Aaron. Yeah, we man, missed we you. miss having you on here. Always glad you're back. <laughs> Aaron said, I'm headed towards oblivion. Thanks, Tyler. <laughs> the movie? Oh, you know, it's pretty good. Dude, so, uh, yeah. 
didn't like two movies come out that were like dystopian science fiction films at the same time like uh, oh probably Elysium and oblivion i feel like elysium and oblivion were, were very like similar time period for sure um yeah. i liked oh god man i think i liked um oblivion more yeah elysium was just i don't know man it was missing this God, I love District 9 so much, and I was really hoping for, like, a cool follow-up, and it was... I don't oh, was the same like people, right? too much budget. Yeah, it was Neil Blomkoff. Dude, I haven't seen Chappie. Have you seen Chappie? Yeah, yeah, I've seen Chappie. I thought it was it was better than Elysium, I thought, but it was still a little strange because it had, um, like, a heavy dose of Dire Antwood, the... I don't even know if that's pr- pronouncing it correct. I don't speak Afrikaans, but um, that South African group. Okay. They're they're like main characters in it, and it's a little strange. Oh. Well, it's strange for you, but not strange for people from South Africa. Yeah, I mean, maybe it's cool for South Africans. They're like the the main guy, Ninja, is is pretty weird. So, that was kind of it was just weird, and off, like unsettling i guess that they were in it and for for what seemed like no reason other than fan service ah i see i was just when you said that i was like you made south i wonder what south africans think of like i don't know ghost in a shell or something like that you know or I'm trying to try to think like fast and the furious but that's no, they're all over the place with fashion appears worldwide. Yeah, I don't know. Some of this culturally here in the states that someone like okay, there you go, a league of their own. No, nah, but baseball's a. That's mm. a good movie, though. You know, forget about it. Do we? Know, you know I what? I don't know if South Africa about... is that far removed from. I know. West, I was just thinking Western about that. It's, like, it's it's a super. It's actually pretty Western. <laughs> this is not the South Africa from uh, Lethal Weapon Three, folks. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, what a movie, dude. Oh wait, that, that was it. Three or two? I know. I, I know what you're talking about. I know what you're talking about. It's the apartheid one. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> Strange days, man. Not, not yeah, I would love to do a painting of Lethal Weapon. I, we got okay. There we go. Once I get caught up on my gallery things, <laughs> I keep saying this all the time. This is a crazy month, the crazy set of months for old old Ray here. But once I get caught up, this is what I say all the time. Once I get caught up, I know. Well, we got to just do it, and I get it. That's <sighs> my schedule is horrible. Horribly tight right now. That's the only reason why. Hey, dude, don't don't stress. But I want to do a thing. Danny Glover. I mean, let's talk about the first. Danny Glover from Silverado. Do that. Danny Glover from Silverado. (laughs) It's one of my favorite westerns, man. What? It's like super young Danny Glover in that too. I barely remember Silverado, so I'm not going to say much about it. Oh, it's Kate su- it's super good. I don't think she's actually many, seen Silverado. How many tombstones out of five? Oh man, it's I. I mean, I'm I'm for this. It's only, it's not a lot of tombstones, but it's good. How many Sam Elliott mustaches? <laughs> At least What'd three. At least three. Yeah, uh, monkey asked. I, I I I recently concluded a deep dive through Cyberpunk 2077, and it's really made me re-examine the cyber slash future genre tropes. Oh, okay. You see, that's what that's I'm interesting. About. Damn it, I gotta get on that game. I have, yeah, I gotta. I just I'm kind of wondering if. I mean, is this re reevaluating the tropes in a good way or? Bad oh yeah, way? in a is good a good way or bad way. Yeah, yeah. What you do you can't tell. Critique is in a a negative critique. But um, I got to check it out as well. I'm I'm looking forward to it. 
It looks so beautiful. Yeah. I love what I always love CD Project Red games, so All right, completely repainted. Here we are. Sometimes you gotta do Dude. it, folks. Sometimes you gotta do it. Let's see here. As an update to a thirty ish year old property, they carried forward a lot of history, updated some, but really made some of the outdated things obvious, like the Orientalism. Uh Oh yeah, that's right. Is it wasn't um Cyberpunk uh tabletop game or a role playing game from TSR or something like that? Um well, there was um there was no, there was a maybe it was, but there was a um Cyberpunk yeah, style game that was tabletop. That yeah, monkey ass confirmed tabletop. Oh, there you go. There you go. There was Shadow Run, which was um, sort of like fantasy cyberpunk. Yeah. And they actually redid. They did Shadow Run as a uh, PC game a couple of years ago. It's actually it was like turn based. Oh yeah, and it was um, a it was like a big um, eight bit game as well. I think that was really famous back in the nineties. Yeah. Okay, I'm yeah, happy I'm, with this now. This turned out a lot better than I thought. Dude, it looks great. I was I was struggling with it. Thank you. Yeah, I just realized something. You remember you were like, oh yeah, you know, when I get caught up, I'll I'll start doing movie por uh, portraits again. Yeah. You're actually doing one. I'm doing one, but I'm I wouldn't say I'm caught up, but the, I can't work on. I can't work on my NDA stuff on here, so. Dude, just, you know, don't worry. We just blur it out. You can work. <laughs> yeah, I just blur out my section the whole time. <laughs> That'd actually be pretty funny. Like, Dude, hey, NDA so stream. I'm working on something. I can't so why see is this it. camera so out of focus? I don't get it, guys. <laughs> That'd be funny. We should work on NDA things all at the same time. Yeah, and just just to be completely blurred, just our face. Yeah. Yeah, just our faces, yeah. Uh, that's funny. I There's got to be somebody out there that does that, right? No, I don't think so, man. That's what I'm thinking. I think we're like... Trailblazers. Trailblazers. That's how we jumped the shark. <laughs> There's a whole series of NDA work that nobody could see. Hey, guy, like... Uh, Gibbs Santos says, oh, we put the camera focused on Tyler's face while he paints. Yeah, you know what we should do? We should get one of those, you know, those rigs that they, uh, like those uh, head cameras yes, that yes. Um, actors make, you know, like, uh, you know, especially video game act uh, uh, actors, you know. Or like, yeah, uh, where it's like mounted on their chest and they kind of like run around. <laughs> yeah. Fuck yeah. <laughs> we should totally do that. <laughs> like a double portrait shot. <laughs> Oh God. God, that's funny. That'd be killer, man. Nothing stopping That'd us. That'd be killer. No, no. There's gonna be there's gonna be things, you know, like I know I'm not gonna I don't want to say the dreaded M word, the metaverse word, but wait, I mean Zuckerberg. There's metaverse? some stuff come. I mean, just the concept of the metaverse, like the AR VR future. Oh yeah. Um, I think it'd be pretty cool to have a stream where, you know, it's not a flat screen, but rather, you know, you literally see us hanging out. Dude, I'm looking forward to that because I think we've agreed time and time again, we've not lived nearly as close enough to each other as we should. No, no. I still think you should move. I mean, I still think you should move. So I'm glad we're both on the same page. Yeah, I mean, I think... I totally think that, and I still think that you're part of the country's okay. I mean, I think it's good, but um, I, I mean, but it's definitely a standard for for where I live. <laughs> it's a cheap imitation of <laughs> Buffalo. Yeah, I love Buffalo, man. I love that place. I moved there. You guys need to work on the weather, though. Yeah. Let's see. Uh... A paradox Moose says when you're playing painting in all reds like this, do you lose the ability to see the color red like after playing Virtual Boy in the nineties? Oh yeah. 
Yeah, I'm gonna be. I mean, it's super again. It's super red on the stream, but it's it's more orange on my side. With, but yeah, no, totally. I, I'm not gonna be able to see these colors for a month. You know, there's a uh, there's a portrait painter. Who was it that that told us this? I don't know if it was Bill Mon. Um, um, they said they always have like I heard somewhere I forgot what painter it was, but they always have like if they're painting red, they'll have a card of green above their easel so they could just rest. Oh yeah, be like their eyes. Yeah, you could have like a just a a gray wall, right? That you could like look at, and be like, oh jeez. Yeah. Damn this thing! Yeah, is... that's. An... I've a... We never had this problem before when I was painting. I don't know why. I mean, it's because I have this new camera. That's why. Well, you were doing it with your iPad, right? Oh yeah, great. Here we go again. What? I didn't say anything. <laughs> you I suggested it. You... <laughs> you solved the problem. You solved the problem before. It just happens to be. What I'm doing now is I'm actually looking over at the stream to get like cool value transitions <laughs> to get reference. <laughs> yeah. Like I like that. Okay, if I can get the right oh, value, that's meta. that's meta right there. <laughs> Painting by screen. So there was like, actually a question about that. Uh, like if it uh, if you repaint things because you looked at the stream the screen and they're completely different. There are sometimes I will actually well I paint from from my screen so I have uh, so I used to have an iMac five um, uh, K twenty seven inch twenty seventeen computer I still do but now I use it upstairs in my painting studio because this is my digital studio where I stream from um, and I use that as a, a screen I got it mounted on some Ergotron arm. It's a very crazy, crazy setup. Um, but yeah, so I will, if it looks good on there, I will make adjustments. There are times where, you know, that that, that happens to me every so often. Um, there are there are a lot of pe people that that do that too, based off of like the photos of their work or how it looks on a video. Mm -hmm. At a certain point, it's just like you and I were talking about this. He just got to be like, all right, it's going to look different on everyone's screen. Screw it. I'm out. Yeah, I, I, that's with all my production work, I've reached that point where I'm just like, it's going to look different. I'm going to make it look the way I want here. And that's what we're going to roll with. So, yeah, it's, I don't know, super frustrating, to say the least. That being said, when it's not like your book man oh yeah those those turned out good i was i'm so i like i'd said with john a bunch of times while we were going through that process i was just so afraid it was going to look really bad um or at least look not really bad because i mean obviously all of john's books look fantastic but um i was expecting it to be that i was going to have to go through every single piece and fix it and adjust all the colors but it was just straight up like my original files almost almost nothing had to be fixed and that was really nice that's all did you have to change them up or anything like that beforehand did john say okay said everything like this no not really he just said send me the files and he does a levels which is what i'd done to most of the pieces already where they'd all been leveled up a little bit um, just because things print darker. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, you know this. I'm just saying it to the chat. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, if, yeah. You're paint, if you're painting digitally, or you have a, like a slide, a digital slide of a physical painting, and you're making a print off of that, it's always going to be darker than... Unless you have this perfectly calibrated screen, it'll be darker than what you see. And that perfectly screen. calibrated screen will, will also look dimmer than most screens. Yeah. Because when you look, at it, it's your. I think we're talking about a piece of paper versus that reflects light into your eyes versus a screen that actually emanates light. You yeah, know? And that's uh, a completely different ballgame. Yeah. 
Um, Go ahead. I didn't mean to cut you off. I can, I'm trying to remember what I was even saying. Um, so I didn't have to do that. Um, he had he had already applied the levels to the ones he thought were going to be a little dark, which was only a few. And so we didn't we barely had to do it. I think we went, we did like imaging on just one of them and made it, and we fixed it pretty quick. We were able to fix it fast and we were good to go. It was impressive how seamless that part was because I was, I was anticipating it just being a mess. Well, that's just a nice, just so many other things to, to stress about. That's one of them. And, you know, that's a, must have been a load off your chest. Yeah, that was good. I mean, that, that was my biggest, my biggest fear, I think, going into making a book was, oh, I'm going to have to color correct every single inch of this thing. But for those folks out there that have the book, what you see is pretty much what I wanted the images to look like. So that worked out nice. Man, okay. Look at how much time we got left. <laughs> I'm feeling we like... We got 50 minutes. I'm feeling almost done with this. Yeah, Fat Bear said three ways to lake affect snow. Yep. Uh... So a question from Fat Baron. Let's say I had a piece of artwork I'd, I'd scanned, I'd like scanned and printed for a small run of gifts. My art that is, this is totally up on the up and up. Is there a place in Seattle area that's good quality? Oh, you're in Seattle area. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, I use the color group all the time in Seattle. Um, um, uh, let me say more about that, I guess. Uh, they, they just do really good quality. They've done my prints for a long time. I do small runs with them all the time. Um, you know, printing is expensive for sure. So they're, they're not like crazy cheap. They're actually, I'd say, normal for the market. Um, there's also uh, Bellevue Fine Art Reproductions in Bellevue. They do all of Brahms stuff and a bunch of other people. So, um, yeah, both. I try both of those out. Um, I like them both. I've worked with both of them. I just I go back to um, the folks over at uh, the Color Group because I've just worked with them for so long. I've I've never I've never really noticed a huge difference between them and Bellevue Fine Art Reproductions, but they're both super solid um, and they'll take care of you really well. They both can do short runs, real easy. So check them out. That's the thing. You gotta. You got to be willing to work with because you're going to be working with a printer. That's the thing about that. It's like it's got to have it's got to be a, a, it's because it's a nice back and forth and you got to know what your needs are and stuff. And so it's really a, a like a trust factor, too. I mean, that's. Yeah, and it, you know, um, uh, I, that's why I, I trust what I get out of the color group. Um, and. I, so I can, I will almost not even do proofs, but, um, when I'm just slightly hesitant, I'll do proofs. And because they're in Seattle, I can just drive over there. They're like five minutes away from me. So I can just drive over and check the proof out real quick and say, all right. And just tell the, the guy who does all the printing, his name is Kevin. And I just tell Kevin to, to go for it. They've, they've always yeah, been great. Good. I've been using them for a long time. I actually got it from uh, Lockwood, Todd Lockwood, um, put me in touch with them many years oh, ago the todd. the todd lockwood the todd lockwood shout out to todd great guy great artist is, is todd uh still doing magic um i think so uh, i think he's a lot of people have jumped back in who were sort of old time magic artists not that todd's an old time one i'd say he's more closer to my well, not, not really. I mean, he's like a generation before me. But yeah, I think he's been doing them again because the original sales are, are so big. Right. Like that and like I know Donato has returned. Yeah, yeah. He's come back in. Um, yeah, a bunch of other people. I can't, can't think of any. But... It's crazy to think what magic was like in the 90s. Yeah, I mean, they paid 
almost nothing. I mean, the original set, I think they paid like 300, two, no, $30. <laughs> Sorry, 300, like $30. Whoa. So like, what about like four? I want to, you know what? You know what I would love to ask a meet? Have you met Therese Nielsen? Um, I have not, but she's been at some cons, I think, around me. I've never actually just never met her. Dude, she said, you know who her uh, big time mentor was, right? I want to say Struson. Bill Mon. Bill? No shit. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. I had no oh, idea. So, oh. dude, there's a connection. That's awesome. She did a post on Muddy, Muddy Colors uh, where it was like, I like drawing on tone paper, my teacher Bill Mon, and then like talks about the artist complete guy to drawing the head and the sanguine pencil and the whole nine, the whole thing. Holy smokes. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. And Bill had mentioned Therese Nielsen. I was like, who's Therese Nielsen? And then, you know, looked her up and I was like, oh, wow. It's like, I recognize a lot of the Star Wars covers. Yeah, yeah. Comic covers, you know. Um, because I didn't really play Magic. I, I knew of Magic, of course, but I didn't play it. She's got that, like, classic, um, like, heavy line specific and design specific way of drawing. Super good. Yeah. Always been a fan. Yeah. And like you were saying before, Drew Struson, like, you know, uh, Drew Struson, uh, like, uh, Airbrush acrylics over color pencils i mean a very a lot of like design elements on top layered i mean it's it's the same tools similar tools but i mean completely different look yeah yeah similar tools different look yeah it totally it's like it's it's i like the seeing that because it's like showing it really highlights the oh the, there's where the artist's individual hand is like they're tr they're basically trained the same way but you can totally tell who's who you look at it. Oh, yeah, totally. Um, let's see here. Uh, let's see. I'm just checking that. The question's here. Uh, Alec Hamilton. Hey, Alec. Um, took my, uh, actually took my, my uh, portrait mini course. Oh, um, really? That's awesome. My head painting course, yeah. Just some really great stuff. Um, uh, and so, uh, Alex said, I read something that magic artists got royalties back then, too. Yes, indeed. Um, yeah. They no got way. Huge, huge royalties. It was. Um, You're kidding me. It was very advantageous for the early. They don't. Ever since Hasbro bought the company, they don't do royalties. But um, it was pretty cool back then for those Gen 1 guys they got a lot of cool royalties out of working on magic do they still get royalties they it's it seems complicated some of them do i think a lot of them were bought out um there yeah they, the contract was bought out but some of them held on to them but what it means is like ultimately like the the work that it will get a royalty is just not used by Hasbro because they don't want to Hasbro doesn't want to pay those royalties. Okay. So uh, I guess this is what paradox uh, moose says on twi on a Twitch stream a few years ago, Larry El Elmore said he was offered a percent of either sales or ownership. I forget which of the two, if he did all of the original uh, magic art, he turned it down as it was too risky. Oh, I sure. When, and he was coming, I think Elmore is coming from a different place. You know, he was working for TSR at the time, he had already done a ton of really famous D&D &D pieces. Um, so it would have been spec work for him to work on Magic at the time because they weren't paying much, but they were offering royalties. So it was too risky. Yeah, I can see that. I can see him thinking it was way too risky. It was, it's spec yeah. work, essentially. Yeah, be like, hell no. Yeah, it is totally. It's like, here's a little bit of money that will, uh, Maybe cover shipping of your artwork. Yeah, nothing. Well, actually, it was probably local, right? It was all... So it involved. was actually, it was done here, right? It was at Wizards of the Coast. And it was, 
like I know a lot of the artists that worked on that lived up here. They went to, all went to art school together up here. So a lot of the original Gen 1 artists were just friends. And the, the main um, art director at the time was basically just getting um, work from his, his friends. That's crazy. And they all know each other. Like a lot of those people all still know each other and they're all still friends to this day. Well, that's good to know. Crazy times being a Gen 1 magic artist. They just they just never knew, you know. And some of those people like went on. I knew some of them were actually art directors at Wizards for a while. Um, I know Mark Poole. He's a great guy. He was a Gen 1 dude and he's... Yeah, man, Mark's He's fantastic. Back on Mark. doing magic work again. Super nice guy. Yeah, I love Mark Poole. Shout out to Mark Poole, man. Shout out. That's probably one of the, one of the nicest people. He's so nice. Just a yeah, good like, good guy all around. Meet. <laughs> like, wow. Like Yeah. Pretty rat. Um So shit what was i gonna say so but, but tsr that's what i was gonna ask you so tsr was from the seattle area the washington area no they were um i want to say geneva outside of minneapolis or somewhere out there oh um, so a lot of um when they were bought a lot the like people that are still there yeah lake geneva there you go um dad's teapots so I'm reading that right. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it was Lake Geneva and they were bought out and a bunch of people actually came to Seattle when they were purchased by Wizards of the Coast. Um, I've worked with an art director there for years. Uh, Dawn Mirren. She's still an art director there. She's on Magic now, but she was an art director on on um, D&D for a long time. She started the careers of tons of people. Like she was their initial art director. Like Brom and wow. Jeremy Jarvis and um, Eric Geist and just a number of artists that their their earliest work was um, art commissioned by Don. I think she her um, husband da um, Dana I think started initially working with like people like Donato and uh, for early wow. D and D stuff. But a lot of those a That's bunch nice. of those people actually came to um, the Seattle area once when when they were purchased so it's kind of a crazy to think that they were transplants because of of wizards of the coast and they still live here and brahm lives here and he used to like work in the building they had a little section um called siberia where like him and todd lockwood were like the lead art um concept artists and they did all the D, &D concept stuff like dark sun and just a crazy time um it's very different now, but pretty cool to look back on those time that time period. Yeah, I remember running into Brahm's work um, in school. I forgot who. Jeez, who was it that introduced me? I th you know, I think it might have been Bryce. Uh, oh yeah, otherwise Bryce Cook uh, showed. A book and it was around the time that Brahm actually had came to the Academy oh okay yeah man he's a legend I'm, yeah it, he's one of my favorite artists of, of all time I just like didn't understand you know like I was like oh here's somebody who was influenced by Frank Frazetta but was doing something completely different mm -hmm. but I, I didn't realize like to say you're influenced by Frank Frazetta is like like a painter saying that they're influenced by Leonardo <laughs> da Vinci you know, yeah. or John Singer Sargent. Like, it doesn't, like, of course, all of them are. <laughs> or how, you know, it's like, yeah. Yeah, so um, many people were influenced by him. Yeah. So, I see this work, and it's like, what the hell, man? That's, it's crazy, you know? And you got to, you got to show with him at the Number Aqua Museum, which is sweet. Did you meet him? He didn't come out, um, but I've, I've met him at, of various cons that have had him sign books stuff. He's just such a nice guy. And, and he lives in the area, but I think he's, I'd heard he is actually moving from the area. He's been here so long, but I heard he's moving. 
which is a shame because I've never gotten a chance to actually get out to his place and then and now he's going to be gone. Oh, Brom should move uh, to where I'm at. Yeah, he's probably going to move to Buffalo. Dude. Just yeah. hold your horses. It's going to happen, okay? Can you imagine if we got Brom? <laughs> we got Brom! We got I think Brom. he's going to move like Georgia or something. What? <laughs> no, I have no idea. I have no idea where he's going to move. I hope it's Buffalo. I mean, I have nothing against Georgia. Shout out to Georgia. I it's just not where not closer to any of us. It's not closer oh, to it's actually, Buffalo. <laughs> it's not closer. Oh man. It's not closer to Seattle. I'm just I mean, gonna sit here and talk for Did you finish it? I think I'm done. I think I'm wow. where I'm I'm gonna like blend some stuff, but yeah. Yeah, I'm happy with this. Jesus. You know. Colors aren't right. You know, what I should do is sit over here and fiddle with the colors on the on the stream alive. Hey, why not? Yeah, let's see if I can. Let's see what I screw up in the middle of the stream. Name of the show. The show it, it's in the show title. Show name. Okay. All right, hold on, hold on. Okay. I just want it to be like a kaleidoscope effect. Like, what the... And people just uh, have almost like a... <laughs> like, cause like a mild psychosis, you know? Yeah, yeah. Warning, if flashing lights cause any problems, be careful. Configure video. Is that, is that what we're talking about here? <laughs> Contrast, saturation. I mean, how could this go... <laughs> hey, look at that. It's gone black and white. Look at that. It's old timey. You know, maybe the saturation's too high. This is more accurate. You see that? You seen that? That's oh, okay. Lot, that okay. is a lot more accurate to the colors I'm rocking here. But right on. this looks good. This makes me want to repaint the whole thing. Honestly, it's it is the saturation's way too high up. I'm gonna bring it down. Sorry, chat. Um, maybe a white balance. Let's see. Doing it live, folks. That's a little closer as well. It's like you didn't change anything. I didn't. I didn't change anything. Oh, God. That's not it. All right. Well, there it is. That's closer. I'm going to leave it there. That's a bit closer. Okay. See, it's, it's a, there's a lot more yellow going in it, for real. All right. <laughs> Dude, you could always just glaze it super red if you wanted to. You know, yeah, I just might. Use Control U on the can canvas. That's what, yeah, Paradox <laughs> Moose. I might, um, you know, once this is all dry, I might do like a really heavy glaze of red over it. Yeah, um, I mean. Of a lizard crimson blue. specifically. I mean, literally, uh, a two second fix if you wanted to fix it. Not that it needs to be. Well, it's I don't your know piece. If, you do whatever you want. I don't think I can. I don't know if pyrrol rubine's transparent enough to glaze with. I think it's kind of well, opaque. Uh, you could force it with enough medium. Well, I'll just use a lizard and crimson. I think it's the, the good one for me. It's the play. It's the what? It's the play. It's the play. That's the play. That's the play. Yeah, I think I could. I might sign this in like straight pyrorubine. You've seen it Damn, live on the air, dude. folks. Signature. Can't believe it. Oh, no, wait. I'm going to glaze it. I'm going to glaze it. I'm going to try and glaze it. So I'm not going to sign it yet. Why don't you try and glaze it now? No, it's wet. Dude, what do you do? That's crazy. <laughs> Let me see like, if I can sign it. Yeah, you know what? I am going to sign it. Wow, Tyler. I shouldn't even sign it. It's like it's from a frame from a movie. It's, I can't say this is my own. Dude, you sign the other ones. That's true. <laughs> this is true. It is a painting. 
it's not the actual frame. <laughs> yeah, this isn't a celluloid. Yeah, if you printed out a, an, a your reference image and then signed that. That's true. That would be that'd be bad. This is and I've interpreted it. It would be it suspect. Well, but... It it'd be hard. It'd be hard to justify authorship. Well, we're doing it. We're going. We're doing it live. We're doing it live. Yeah, man. I don't know. Wow, Tyler. The race. What? What are you saying? I don't want to say anything unless you're signing. <laughs> I'm holding my breath. Yeah, dude. I'm, I mean, I hold my breath every time I sign a piece. I'm like, oh, God, I don't want to do this over again, especially if it's over wet paint because yeah. you have to move. Oh, yeah. You got to paint the whole area out. Do you like dude, your yeah. signature? Because I hate mine sometimes. You know where I stole my signature? I actually do like my signature. Okay. Nice. Um, it went through It went through many uh, revisions. Yeah, I mean, I've had like five different ones. Yeah, so I don't mind it at all. It changes ever so slightly, every so often, you know. But I, uh, I just stole it from uh, Chris Ron. Oh yeah, Chris's signature is great. I mean, I realize that he puts like the the A and the R and the H. They all like connect. I don't do that. I just yeah. Words out. He's just got a good. Words. He's got a good. Well, you guys both do. You both got good like last names for for painters, right? I I've when I was like when we were in school, I used to sign like my full last name, but it's just like so many letters down there. I should have taken my dad's advice and made my art name Tyler Allen. He he said I should do that when I was going to art school. <laughs> Your dad said that. That's awesome. Because that's my middle name. It's his middle name. Like it, it would have been easier to sign my paintings. I could have just put Alan on all my paintings. Dude, but I've, is, I've gone. I don't want to paint out Tyler Jacobson, so I just write Tyler J on all my paintings now. That is, that is, wow, wow. <laughs> that's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. That's what he said. I should have taken his advice. I probably have a website. That's good advice, man. <laughs> That's good advice. Uh, I'll create a second person and um, a second persona, and I'll do different, completely different kind of art. Honestly, I know people. So I, you know, we've heard, right? We've heard of people like you know, just throughout history, they yeah, change their name. So, you know, their because their regular name sounds they think it sounds lame, but like. I know people now that have literally changed their names. Like they're they, not like legally, but they go by a completely different name. Oh, really? Top to bottom. Well, huh? you know what? I think I know some people that do that and they, they have like a different name, professional name. Yeah. And that's, you know, <laughs> Hey man, T T Jack. If I you, like that. Or yeah, you know, T bone, T bone's good. Yeah. I don't you know if I can what? pull let's, it off. Let's get, here we go. This is what I'm talking about. Two things. Once I'm gonna, one, I'm going to answer Aaron's question, uh, and I'm going to piggyback it by talking about somebody else, about what John Rush does. But um, uh, so Aaron said, any thoughts on deciding signature color and placement? Yes. Oh yeah. Aaron, I sometimes either do the complement or the uh, the mother color of my paintings. So. I do the same. Uh, if, it, if I have like an overall blue, I'll do it kind of that. Um, like if I was signing rays, I'd probably sign it in some kind of blue, to, but to stand out just a little bit. Yeah, I bet you would. Yeah, if I was going to sign your painting. Like on this one, it's mostly red, so I you can't really see it on the stream, but I signed it in the corners in a, with a really dark red that, that, will, that stands out just slightly from the super dark red of his shoulder. I never want it to stand out too much. Yeah, actually, a green is not a bad idea, Tyler. Damn it. Yeah, I should do that. All right. Well, I uh, said I said blue. I didn't say green. You said blue. <laughs> well, blue. 
Green's got blue in it. It's like a blue green. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, yeah, Viridian. I love Viridian. <laughs> Just straight Viridian. <laughs> so, you know, John Rush, he redesigns, he tailors his signature. Check out, this is how, this is how much of a baller he is. He tailors his signature to his, his art. So if it's a little bit more art, like he will change it every single time. Oh, wow. If it's That's like, like J.C. Leindecker would do that, wouldn't he? He probably took it from Leindecker. Like, yeah. it turns it more into a symbol uh, in one thing. And everything's designed to fit the, um, like, the aesthetic. You know, I piece, like that. I'm going to take that from him. Sometimes I just want, like, a, sometimes I want, like, a Times New Roman just T, you know? Yeah, dude. That's what I'm saying. Like... You're you're a, a designer, right? So you have you like to design things, right? So it's just basically do a concept for for each painting, as if a painting were the subject matter, which it is, and then you're, you know conceptualizing what the piece would, uh, what the signature would look like. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Shit, I'm gonna start doing. So why that. don't we start now? Start now. No time but the present. Well, I already signed this rub thing. That, no, nah, rub that <laughs> out, man. You're good. It's wet. No, you're you right. You should have thought about that before you no, signed it. No, you're right. No, it's not. It's actually, I, it actually isn't wet in that area. I'm doing it right now. I'm doing it live. Said that already. Look at that. Boom. It's gone. Um, yeah, but now i got to paint something different. Great. Here we go. All right, I'm going to mix up a color here. That's looking great, man. Damn. Well, thanks. It's not done. Oh, I like okay. someone else's piece. <laughs> I mean, you could hurry up That's a little bit. But it's a deal. <laughs> I've gotten a lot better over the, over the ages of doing this show. <laughs> of getting, what, faster? Yeah, I'm just getting a little faster. Oh, dude. Okay, I've got an idea here. And I'm using a lot of paper towels right now. Sometimes sometimes I get a little paper towel crazy. Ain't nothing wrong with that. It's all recycled. I don't know. I use these blue ones. I don't know if they're recycled. It's probably waste. I'm probably being wasteful. Is that terry terry cloth tiles? They're like shop towels. Dude, where do you get those? The, you can get them at the hardware store. No kidding. Yeah, they're great. I should probably invest in those. I get I just order them on Amazon actually. Um, oh. I get huge boxes What's... of them, so I have like fifty rolls in the in my laundry room. There you go. Re Rex Rady said. Uh, when I got divorced, the clerk came out to ask my my ex if she needed a name change for me. I was pissed off. When when ex w said asked why, I said it didn't ask me. I could have been Batman. I could have been Dread. The, I could have been Dread Lord. <laughs> it was true. <laughs> that is rude of them not to ask you. Like, well, maybe you want to change your name. Maybe you changed your name in the first place. I never thought my name would be perfect for like a, like an artistic name, but I guess uh, I don't know. I've had people say that, and I, I, I was just like, "It is. It's good, man. It just, it it writes out well." Yeah, it does write out well. I mean, I'm I'm just saying objectively, you know, uh, when I do everything uppercase too, it looks really nice because the N and the L and the A, they're all kind of hard edge i mean there's like a little there's a one o but there's not like a yeah it's not too long but it's long enough that you can do stuff with yeah it's like it's just like a good i think i gotta let this dry it's not can't get this red to be opaque enough don't you dare you gotta do it you could do some practice uh ones off to the side if you wanted to 
Uh, Aaron said, Ray, do you ha uh, have to place a signature with, with the frame in mind? Yes, I do. But it, I drive my framer, which is also uh, my gallery, uh, my bomb fine arts, um, <laughs> one of my galleries. But I would consider it my home gallery. Uh, this is the first gallery I started with. I drive Graves from Ibom a little nuts with that because I sometimes will put like the most awesome detail like off to the edge. I'm getting a lot better about it now. But so Grace is forced to basically have a floater frame for all my paintings. I really like the floater frame look for my pieces. It works well with it. But I do, um, yeah, I'll put like, for instance, like my signature is probably going to go here. This is also the re reason why I do a comp too, because if the signature kind of sucks, I can kind of play around with it and not be too worried, because this is going to be a 30 by 40 painting. Um, but I'll put it here, but I'll put it like up and over like this. And the reason why I really started to do that was um, I've had a lot of, uh, this happened more than once. Um, uh, sometimes people, I've had a couple of people buy a painting and have a different frame in mind. So they'll just, you know, take the painting out of the frame and, you know, and so I want to make sure that it looks good in most, you know, as many frames as possible. Well, you probably, you, you, you make sure there's how much space around the edge though, right? Like, uh... yeah, I would say about this much. Yeah. Something like this. I wouldn't want to put it like right along the edge. I'd say about here. You know, is where I would do it. it would give it a little bit of space. And then also just, it's basically just bleed is basically what it is. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's just painting with the yeah. bleed. Yeah. The bleed's not super severe, but it's like a, like an inch on each side. It's usually good. Don't put anything like super important. All right. I've, I've done two signatures. I hate them both. So. Bye. Dude, but this is good. This is like you breaking it. <laughs> breaking the mold. We're going to do it. We're, we're trying to push. I think everybody in the chat agrees with me. We're going to push it until you change your name to Alan. Like just Alan. Boom. Done. Oh, I kind of like that. Really thin tea. That's what I'm going yeah, for. A little thin tea. Well, I like a thin tea. Thin teas are cool. Yeah, we gotta put the date on there though. Doing something different, folks. I've always liked that, like the like John Rush had a it was like a J and an R in a circle. Always loved that look. Mm -hmm. You know, like I I remember I, I used to when I was a, a kid. I used to sign my name like R B and then put it in the box. I guess oh, I saw somebody yeah. do that once, and I'm like, "That's pretty oh, good. Man, it looks great. It looks great. I That's might go back cool. to that. Go back, man. Change it up. Different eras. Remember we were looking at all those um, Randy Barrett paintings, and he had like different signatures per like every year. <laughs> That's true. That's true. <laughs> Randy's another designer, though, man. He's like you know, yeah. he's a concept artist. I've had this one. I'm I've had this one. I have it on my business cards, and it's like, it's like. I can't remember the font. I'll have to find the font. I want to say it's like Trajan or something, but it's just a T and then I overlapped the J so that it's basically a T with a J that has like the little serif at the bottom. And I like that quite a bit, but I don't know if I can paint that. I can, I could stamp it. Like I could make like a stamp and like dip it in the paint. But, um, Oh, I don't know if I could, it's such like a tight font. I don't know if I could paint it. So, you know, or I could go like Greg's like calligraphy M that he puts on his paintings. Dude, this is like, he took a calligraphy class and. Yeah, yeah. I was smart. Know. I've, you know, I, I love, uh, like Ted Kinsella's got a good, well, he's got a good last name for that too. I think it's time. It's time for me to change it up. I get this. This is what happens to me though, is I change the way I sign stuff and then. Um, I'll go to like a magic convention and some magic collector will come up and be like, all your signatures are different. Now I have to get all my stuff signed again. <laughs> well, listen, 
Like, yeah, it, it changes. Or or if I've signed, mm. like, 500 cards that day, my hand's tired and it changes. <laughs> Turns into mush. <laughs> that happens a lot, actually. Oh, dude, I... Uh... I can only imagine. I can only imagine with you for that. That sounds crazy. The book was nuts, man. I had to sign like 1,500 pages. Um, that was that. I had to take it in. So that I could keep the uh, signatures consistent, I had to um, kind of chill out and and not go um, not go super hard. So I would do like a few hundred at a time and then like let it sit. Because I, I I knew what was going to happen is if I tried to do like all 1,500 in one go, half of them would just be destroyed. Like they wouldn't look like anything. Right. Like a scribble. Well, I can only imagine, yeah. You don't want to like, out of all the times, you don't want to mess up your <laughs> yeah. your book, dude. No. Um. Oh yeah, Dad. Uh, Dad. Uh, Dad's teapot says you have an art book now. Can't you just sign it, Tyler? Or now? I mean, I essentially do. I, I. It just says Tyler, and then there's like a a J at the end that swoops across and underlines the whole thing. So it it basically just says Tyler. Like I'm going Vincent Van Gogh on this. I'm just like it's my first name. Well, you know, that could be a thing, though. <laughs> yeah, I mean it was right for Vincent Van Gogh. Yeah, but like, the only you know, well, yeah, but Tyler sense. Tyler also doesn't write out very well, like you know, like Ron or Bonilla does or Brom. Yeah, I know Brom and I. You know, we have we have great <laughs> you and Brom, dude. What the fuck? Part my French <laughs> on the stream. Clean it up. The bilingual. It's a bilingual stream. <laughs> I do like them. Uh, paradox moose um i do love the idea of just fingerprinting all your paintings that's pretty good they prove authenticity it proves authenticity right that's pretty good yeah or you could like you could get like your um you know i don't know like have your dna code translated into like a barcode or something and then and then like stamp that onto your paintings I like this stamp idea, though, man. Dude, I think this is I think this is a thing because you could do something really clean, you know, graphically design it in in Illustrator, and yeah. make us make a rubber stamp. You can make like a few different sizes, and then you just dip it in. The, you mix up what you want, dip it in that, and pop. The paradox. Oh says, no, sh- no, sh- that's I awesome. Work, no, I'm excited to that. Boom, done. Done then. Done and done. We'll do a sequ- sequence signature. Yeah. Gattaca. I'm writing Gattaca on all my paintings. <laughs> Love that movie. By the way. Is Gattaca completely silent? No, no. It's um. Yeah. It's a movie that came out in the in the nineties. Was oh, it the nineties? Yeah, I, I remember seeing it. I just don't. It's just like I it's, saw it it's, around the. T- it's awesome, man. It's a, it's this um not silent, uh, not no uh, dialogue. No, it's good dialogue. It's full of it. It, does? it doesn't have a ton, but it's it's full of it, yeah. This is a brilliant movie though about um yeah, 97. There you go. Um if it's about this like which we're almost certainly headed to, like a two-tiered society where you have genetically engineered people and people that are not genetically engineered. And um it's about like basically one character kind of overcoming this which and i mean i guess if you think of it in like broad sci-fi terms it's unrealistic that he could ever overcome it but um he anyways it's a, it's a story about how he's overcoming this system um beating it uh, it's a brilliant movie absolutely brilliant but the, it, seven, okay. it's called gattaca and the gattaca is just the like a nonsense word but it's it's using the letters um from the DNA sequence, the you know, DNA sequence. I got it. those, those peptides, right? Someone's got to know this. What are they called? Fatty well, acids? Uh, uh, Paradox moose probably would. Yeah, probably. Yeah. There's something. Just basically a, a, 
a poor man's uh, paycheck. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> you ever seen paycheck? Um, yes. <laughs> poor man's paycheck. I mean, yes, Gattaca was low budget, but I wouldn't go so far as to call it poor man's paycheck. <laughs> <laughs> Nucleotides. There we go. Thanks. Thanks, Paradox Moose. Peptides of proteins. Correct. Right, right, right. Idiot. idiot I was idiot. a bio major once. <laughs> uh, dummy. Go watch Paycheck. Paycheck. Well, that was based on Philip K. Dick story, though, right? Yeah. Well, John Wood directed it, I think, right? Oh, The Legend. You know, I would love to see my brother see it, saw it, and he like loves it. He he watches all the old school Chow Young Fat movies. Oh yeah, like hard boiled. Hard boiled. Like, like hard boiled man. The killers. Hard boiled. Yeah, killers. The killer, all, easily, all I think killer might be better than hard boiled, but we're getting crazy there. See, we should do it. I wouldn't mind doing Chow Young Fat. Like that'd be sick too. Marathon. Well, just doing like a stream where we just do portraits of like hard boiled. Like it's just like an excuse to watch hard boiled, which is nuts. Yeah, so good. Yeah, you see. Mm. See, I wasn't done. Like, now I'm working on it some more. There you go. Yeah, but you know, you sign it so that you could be like, all right, it's done. And then like, it's like, if I had the ability to like go back and change anything, like, yeah. What would I change? And it's, it's a time like machine you going back right. in time. You're cheating it. You're cheating the system. That's the way I look at it. It's it's the time machine. I'm going back. It gives you like an instant it. fresh look. Time I just machine. Wanna get, time I want to get that little like in this reference. There's like a pretty significant rim light around the like the around the wig. That looks killer. Thanks, man. I actually forgot about how, I forgot how it looked before. So, well, we didn't really d deep dive into the, the the incredible film that this is. Francis Ford Coppola's Bram Stoker's this? Dracula. Who was the uh, cinematographer for that movie? I don't know. I don't know. Oh, okay. I usually know the cinematographers. Some of the best like, costuming should... work in the history of film was done in this movie. I should you imagine what? him what doing that Pinocchio. No, I was gonna say we should do like a cinematographer's thing, like like a Roger Deakins films, like Roger just... Deakins Fest. Yeah, it's like all Coen yeah. Brothers movies, and like um, Shawshank. Right? Didn't Deakins do Shawshank? Um, I don't think so. I think he was too, well, he wouldn't have been too young, but I don't think he was established enough yet for Shawshank. Oh. I could be wrong. The people in the chat of the internet, they could probably look it up. Oh, man. Let's kind see. Ruined the Let's see. I'm feeling, I'm feeling lucky today. Oh, about it being Deacon's? Yeah, yeah, Shawshank Redemption, yeah. Why did I think that? I don't know, maybe he did. And then, I love uh, that movie, though. Who was, who was uh, oh my God, Blade Runner? Um, I don't know who was the original cinematographer for Blade Runner, but um, Roger Deakins was the cinematographer for the um, Denny Villeneuve um, Blade Runner. That's what I meant, sorry. Yeah, yeah, Denis Villeneuve. Um, and he nailed yeah, it. Some... Yeah, I think it's better than the original. Blade Runner is one of my favorite movies of all time. There, I said it. Wow, dude, that is a hot take. Dude, wow. I've thought long and hard about this, and I think it's better. You know what? Are you taking a stand? It's I like not, that. It's not a You're cultural a revolution like the original one was. It'll never replace it. But as a movie, it's better. I'm gonna I'm gonna admit this on the air here right now. Um, 
Oh, it was Roger Deakins. You were right, dude. You nailed it. Roger Deakins for Shawshank. Yeah. See? Right there by Roger Deakins. See? I love Roger Deakins. Ooh. I should have known that. I'm embarrassed with myself. Honestly, um, not enough. The I'm going to say it here, though, right now. And I was saying this to Kate the other day. I love the original Blade Runner. I love it. But I literally fall asleep every time I put it on. Every single time. I don't even know why you would admit that to Kate, much less someone from public. She agreed, too. Public. She said the same. All right, I'm going to suppose we're on the air here. She agreed. She said the same. I think you misinterpreted what Kate had said. <laughs> you didn't hear her right. Yeah. Kate probably said, you make me fall asleep. <laughs> yeah, that's probably, right. that's probably more accurate. <laughs> uh, you see, but I, I watch, I watch, I've watched many a times Blade Runner on silent though. Oh, just for the cinematography. Nice. Yeah, nice. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I'll, I'll just watch it while I'm working. It is beautiful just to have going. You know, you, you could tell Kate. You know what I fell asleep during? Two movies. I've never. I'm telling you. Two movies. I've, I've never fallen asleep during a movie forever. But the, all of a sudden, there's only been, and that happened, it, then it, like that, that streak broke. But two movies did it to me. One was Justice League. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. The Josh Which, Whedon version. The Josh Whedon one. Okay. The theatrical yeah, release. Yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah. I fell asleep. Yeah, that makes sense. I would fall asleep in that too. And I woke up and I was like, what? And like, I was seeing the end of the movie and I'm like, what? The movie didn't make any sense. And I was thinking to myself like, well, I fell asleep during it. So why don't I just watch the movie again at some point? I watched it again. It still didn't make any sense. <laughs> <laughs> you had to watch the Snyder Cut for it to make sense, dude. Dude, that's, totally. That's what you totally. had to do. It actually did. It actually did. The second movie was the... Uh, North American version of Legend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the the uh, the U.S. release. I get it. Yeah, the That's blasphemous weird. version. Uh, it's it's just because the soundtrack's so bad that of course you're gonna fall asleep. Yeah. And the edits <laughs> sucked. Oh god. <laughs> yeah, R- yeah. R.I.P. Uh, Vangelis, man. Have I can't believe that? it. Yeah, couldn't even. What a what a shame. Yeah, I mean, yeah, makes sense, but still, like a, you know, talking about Blade Runner, he did Blade Runner? He's Blade Runner. He's the sound of Blade Runner. Yeah. It's like I remember you ever played Destiny, on um. You know I haven't, uh, and I think that needs to change. I mean, I don't know if it needs to change. You're probably better off no? having never dug okay. into it. It's a, just a, a time sink. It's one of those games that like takes your whole life away. It's like a game that also has homework attached to it. Um, it's it's good, but it's like good luck um, getting anything else done. But my point is that there there's like points where you're running around the tower in that game, and they've kind of like snuck in like little hints of like Vangelis sounding music, and it's just like a really wonderful nod to you know whoever did the music for Destiny. Um, really wonderful nod to Blade Runner. But that was, I don't think they really had that in, in Destiny 2, but it was it was definitely in Destiny 1 when you're running around the tower. There was like little moments of Blade Runner sounding music. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm a, like I said before, the, like what the aesthetic standards that it set. You know, yeah. Yeah, man. Not un, unrivaled, right? So like the second one literally can't do that. It can't do it. It's impossible. That's like thinking that, you know, any Star Wars, you know, uh, series is going to revolutionize film. Like, it's not going to happen. It's yeah, just, no. But doesn't... you can tell a really good story on the back of... You can. Which is what I think they did with the new Blade Runner. Right. They And, and the it was the most the... faithful, like, reapproaching to an old film that I've ever seen. And the best thing that... Uh, I think happened to that film was a the uh the director and b the fact that really scott went to denis the new uh and said 
you've got to make this thing your own. Yeah. Don't make it what I did. Don't make it what I did, you know, and that's, like, that's wow. great though. I mean, I, that's a cool thing for really Scott to have done. Um, because we're in the age of, you know, he sees it. We're in the age of remakes and reboots and yeah, you gotta, you, it's going to be better if you make it your own thing. And that's exactly what he did. It's so, it's such a weird paradox. It's such a, it is such a heavy nod to the original Blade Runner, but then it's so, like, it's so faithful to the original Blade Runner, but then it's so its own entity. It's like its own powerhouse entity. It, I, I remember thinking, like, I wish, I wish there was a Doom movie and I wish it looked like this, but in the desert and boom. I'm serious. That was the first yeah. thing I thought. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't actually the first thing I thought. Is when they entered into the the corporation, the building. It was like very like um, like pyramids based. Mm -hmm. Oh, the Tyrell Corporation building. The Tyrell, yeah, but it was it was the new Tyrell Corporation, like the right in twenty forty two. I forgot what it was called, but whatever. Um, Well, that is it, man. Ten (laughs) o'clock. Forget it. We're done. That's a great way to yeah. (laughs) Yeah, All right. So. like we said, um, we will uh, be back next month. Uh, yep. We're going to take a, a, a break. Um, the streaming is actually going to be technically impossible uh, for the both of us to do it at the same time. Yeah, I'll be out of I'll be and, out of the country. Yeah, yeah. So Tyler will be be out of the country, and I'll be upstairs at my easel and running around like a crazy person. But I'll tell everybody about the trip when I get back. How about that? Yeah, please do. Please do. Uh, that'd be great. Um, so, yeah, so I'm going to be basically finishing this off. It's looking uh, awesome, hosting. man. Uh, thanks, man. Uh, it's it's pretty close. I'm, I'm going to do one more pass of just tightening it up and then call it a day and then move on to the actual finish. Um, but, yeah, it's been uh, been a lot of fun. Uh, I've been uh, Ray Bonilla or Ray Bonilla. You can find my work at um, RaymondBonilla.com. And on Instagram at Ray Bonilla Painter. Uh, and uh, who are you, sir? I have been, and always will be. Although, unless I change my signature, um, I have been Tyler Jacobson. Uh, maybe I'll be Tyler Allen one day, but we'll see. Um, <laughs> yeah, and you can find me at um, at Tyler Jacobson Art um, on Instagram, and my website's at Tyler Jacobson Art, which I should update one of these days. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll either, maybe we'll do a show next week. I'm not sure, but, um, otherwise we'll see. Oh yeah. We did after. talk about that. Yes. Maybe, we yeah. Did talk about that. Let's we'll do, do it. Let's week. shoot for it. We'll shoot for it. If not, we'll, do, we'll, we'll see you. We'll see you in July. If not. Boom. Boom. We did it. We extended it. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So, and also, um, thank you to, uh, everyone. If you're watching this on demand, thank you so much on, on, on YouTube. Thank you so much for watching it and hanging out with us. Uh, for your likes and comments uh, as well. We really appreciate it. Um, please, if it, this is the first time you've ever uh, seen us, consider checking out our other older videos. We have all of our videos on demand on our YouTube page and consider subscribing. Uh, please also to keep uh, up on the show and when, if there are any cancellations or when the show uh, or the stream is, is airing, uh, follow us on Instagram, yeah. uh, which is just at live brush, one word. And um, you'll you'll get updates as well as uh, high res shots of, of uh, Tyler's paintings and my paintings that we do on the show, and also there you know other paintings that we just do uh, in general. So uh, thank you so much, everyone in the chat. Always always a pleasure uh, to to have the wonderful community uh, that the stream is just sort of manifested. So we really appreciate it, and uh, yeah, we look forward to seeing everyone uh, next week. See you guys then. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye.